Hi, welcome back to Rebel Road. I'm Alexandra and I have another sewing tutorial for you. Finally, I know it's been like excusably long until I've up since I've uploaded on YouTube, but lots of crazy things have happened and it's really exciting. Please give the video a thumbs up, check out my social medias, Facebook and Instagram and at Rubyvale Road and I hope I will be uploading again soon. Materials you'll need to make the apron are fabric of your choice and two D buckles. You will also need your sewing kit and sewing machine. Equipment to help make the pattern would be some butcher's paper, a pen, a calculator if you need one, a French curve if you happen to have one, a ruler, and some paper scissors to cut it out. Alright, I thought it would be best to show you uh, on the finished apron the measurements, um, how I took the measurements to make the apron pattern. Uh, so first up I just measured across my chest, how far I want the apron to go across my chest. Then I measured along my waistline, how far I wanted the, the apron to go across my waist. And then for the length measurements you'll need from the top of the apron to your waist and then from the top of the apron to your desired finish length. Alright, to make my pattern, I just measured half of my chest measurement plus 1.5 centimeters for seam allowance across the top of my paper. Then I measured down the length from my chest to my waist. From there I ruled across half of my waist measurement plus 1.5 centimeters for seam allowance. Then by eye or with a French curve connected the chest to the waist. Here you can decide how much you want that to cut away. After that I measured down from the chest to my finished length and remembered to add 3 centimeters for seam allowance. To finish I ruled the waist to the bottom and then the pattern is ready. Now taking our fabric we will fold it over. Make sure that the right sides are facing together and the width is enough to fit in the apron pattern. Then we're going to pin the pattern to the fabric. So just place the long straight edge along the fold of the fabric and then pin it into place and cut around the other edges. Don't cut along the fold. Do the same to cut another piece of the apron so that we'll have a front and a back. Then we shall cut out the two straps to tie the apron with. I made my straps 3cm wide for the finished width, which means that they need to be cut out at 6cm wide to include seam allowance. You can make these as wide or as thin as you like. Just make sure that each tie can wrap twice all the way round your waist and longer if you want a big bow. I just measured the width and length of the strap straight onto the fabric, as I didn't make a pattern for this part, but if you prefer to make a pattern, of course you can go ahead and do that. Probably don't do my dodgy method of pinning the fabric and then cutting it just to, because you run the risk of cutting pins, which is really bad for your scissors. Um, if you've got fabric chalk or something like that, it's probably much safer, safer, better, all round, ideal option. <laughs> to sew the straps, we're just going to fold the uh, each strap in half with right sides facing together and then we're going to pin and sew along the very long straight edge and then just leave the, the ends open so that we'll be able to turn them out the right way with a safety pin. And then stitch closed one end of each tie. Don't have to worry about stitching closed both ends as one end um, will be going into the inside of the apron. Lastly to cut out will be two rectangles to make as tabs for the D buckles to be attached to the apron. Just make them wide enough to fit through the D buckle and they don't need to be particularly long. And again, we'll just fold those in half with right sides together. Just stitch along the long edge and leave the shorter ends open so that we can pull them out to the right side with a safety pin.
time to put it all together. So we're going to take our front piece of the apron and with it facing up, we're going to position each tie in each top corner. Measure each tie 1.5 centimeters in from the side edge and leave 1.5 centimeters of the tie in the top edge seam. Leave the ties hanging down through the front of the apron. Then taking the D buckles, fold each tab over the straight edge of each D buckle. From there we were going to take these and we're going to pin them at the waist just below the finish of the curved edge or the, like the armhole of the apron. Again, measure 1.5 centimeters in from the edge and have the D buckles facing into the center of the apron so that the tabs and buckles will be sandwiched in between the front and back pieces of the apron. This will lead us to laying the back piece on top with the right side facing down. Then we can pin around all the edges, except at the bottom edge we will leave a 5cm gap and keep the ties hanging out through the gap. This is where we will turn the apron through to the right side. Add new pins to pin together all three layers and remove the pins from underneath so that we don't leave them in there while we are sewing. Stitch all the way around where pinned, keeping a 1.5cm seam allowance. As you get to the tabs and the ties, just reverse stitch over them just to make them extra strong, make sure they're nicely sewn in. Once you finish sewing, then we can press the seams flat and then we're going to carefully cut in the seams without cutting the stitching just along the curve of the armhole so everything sits nice and flat. For the cuts, just do them like little notches so that they look sort of like little triangles cut into the seam. Then we can pull the apron through to the right side using that gap that we left in the bottom of the hem. And there we have it. Press the seams, give the whole apron a nice good iron, make it look really lovely and professional. And last but not least, just use a hand stitch or a machine top stitch to close that gap that we left in the bottom of the hem. And then everything is finally complete. I hope this leaves you inspired to make one yourself and if you have any questions please leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you so much for tuning in to Ribby Vale Road and I wish you all the best with your sewing adventures. See you next time.